It's Daylight Saving Monday. This is the, uh, we got an extra hour, uh, which I spent resetting all the clocks in the house. It's a waste of an hour. <laughs> Didn't we vote to stop this Daylight Saving nonsense? Didn't we, Guillermo? Yeah, I think this is the last year, I think. You do? Yeah. No? I'm pretty sure we so. voted to get rid of Daylight Saving Time was definitely not invented by someone who had a five-year-old living in the house, because, oh, speaking of five-year-olds, I want to mention Donald Trump on, um, <laughs> on Saturday night, my wife starts getting texts and uh, asking if, I, if we saw what Trump said about me. I, didn't, I got no texts. She got a lot of them. Well, it turns out Fibaracci gave me a shout out during one of his blue collar comedy tours. And I have to say, sometimes it feels like he doesn't like me that much. Did you see where all these people that don't like us, they're dying? I saw Jimmy Kimmel said that his show's practically dead because nobody that likes Trump will watch. And guess what? That turned out to be a majority of the people. The show is dead, and so are the other ones. That's right. Our show is dead. Our show is so dead, he's going to bury it next to his ex-wife at one of his golf courses. That's, that's how dead this... You know it's dead? I'll tell you what's it. All those endangered animals, your chinless sun shot, that's what's it. You know it's dead? The look in your wife's eyes when you beg her for sex on your birthday. <laughs> I will say, in January, our show will have been on for 20 years. You got kicked out after four, okay? I'm, I'm on television. You're on the toilet at your golf club screaming at yours. I love that Donald Trump is calling me out at uh, a rally for Dr. Oz, who, by, who is a total phony, by the way, Dr. Oz. And I'm going to tell you a story. Years ago, when Trump was running for president, I had dinner with Dr. Oz and his wife, Lisa, and they told me and a group of other people a story. They were at Mar-a-Lago, and this older woman, it was a party, is all dressed up. She had an accent, a very glamorous older woman, walks up to Trump, and he's telling somebody else how good she looks or something, and she says, Donald, how do I look? And he says, you would look better wet, and he shoves her in the pool. He pushes this fully dressed older lady into the pool, and she's humiliated, and Lisa Oz helped her get her out of the pool, and she's like, get some towels, and uh, helps her and warms her up, and Trump just looked on and laughed like a maniac, and they told us this story with disgust. They were disgusted, and now they're up on stage endorsing each other. Isn't that great? A lot of integrity there. That's, um, even Oprah, who made Dr. Oz, endorsed his opponent, John Fetterman, which is, I mean, look, that's like, that would be like me not endorsing Guillermo. It just wouldn't happen. No, never. For mayor of Margaritaville or something. Yeah. I don't know what. But... I'll try, yeah. But you will get my vote. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. This is funny. On Saturday night, Dr. Oz encouraged voters near Pittsburgh to get up early the next day and vote for him before the Steelers game. Only problem was the Steelers uh, had a bye week. They weren't playing on Sunday at all. <laughs> Poor Dr. Oz, if he wins, he's going to ha actually have to move to Pennsylvania. I don't know if he knows this. I have a big announcement to make, and that is uh, I'm hosting the Oscars in March. It's very nice. It will be my third time hosting the show. I have already started making a list of whose names I should keep out of my effing mouth. You know, you can't be too careful. <laughs> and it's very flattering to be asked to do this, and um, it's especially interesting because the media, some of them have... Uh, an amazing ability to review the Oscar show bef months before it even happens. Like this morning, uh, Gawker wrote uh, Jimmy Kimmel to host another mind-numbingly boring Oscars. <laughs> Who else do you get to helm a sinking ship? <laughs> the AV Club, the most thankless job in Hollywood, has found its man in Jimmy Kimmel. Even Esquire, Kimmel will captain what will surely be the most awkward Academy Awards since last year's Academy Awards. <laughs> and then you have all the angry uncle websites that are not happy. Oscars flip bird to Red State USA, named Jimmy Kimmel host. Hollywood chooses far left late show comic over stars who might unite America. <laughs> Which stars might unite America? I don't... Maybe Donnie and Marie, nobody else though. <laughs> I, at this point, I'm not sure uniting America is remotely possible. Word out of Mar-a-Lago is that Trump could throw his uh, dandruff-heavy MAGA hat into the ring as early as tomorrow, and he's already attacking his Republican rivals. He's at uh, that rally in Pennsylvania, supposed to be endorsing Dr. Ross. He went through his poll numbers, and he took uh, a shot at future rival Ron DeSantis. We're winning big, big, big in the 
Republican Party for the nomination like nobody's ever seen before. Let's see, there it is, Trump at 71, Ron DeSanctimonious at 10 percent, Mike Pence at 7. Oh, Mike's doing better than I thought. Yeah, he's, li he's lost some speed on his nickname, Fastball, you know? In the old days, it would have been something like Smelly Ron, and we would have all went with it. But that wasn't his only stop on the campaign trail this week. He was also in Iowa, where he almost got overshadowed by his opening act. CNN's listening to us. You can take your woke, fiscally irresponsible craziness, and you can take it and go to the Soviet Union. I don't care. This is Iowa. Donald Trump, take us back the way it used to be. <laughs> back in the days before I squeezed into these pants and strangled my testicles. <laughs> Uh, the fraudigal son, Don Jr., hairlined a rally in Miami yesterday, uh, where I have to admit, he made a hell of a point. We're up against a Democrat party today that doesn't believe that a United States senator should not have mush for brains. We've seen what happens when you put someone with mush for brains in the office. My name is Herschel Walker, and I'm running for the United States Senate. Oh, Herschel has a big day tomorrow. This is, um... This is going to be interesting. Herschel Walker is eyeing that Senate seat in Georgia like a Waffle House waitress who forgot to take her birth control. He is, uh, it's, this race is stupidly close, and if Democrats in Georgia don't turn out to vote tomorrow, this Mr. Potato Head could be their next senator. I'm here to fight for my family. I'm here to fight for Georgia. And I told him I didn't want to be a politician. I don't play golf. I don't eat lunch. I don't eat supper. I don't eat with them. I don't eat what they eat because I'm here to represent the people. Well, hold on. I don't think I follow that. He doesn't eat lunch. He doesn't, or he doesn't eat golf and doesn't play lunch. I don't know. It's, let's put a transcript uh, of uh, what he said on the wall. Okay. I'm here to fight for my family, uh, even the ones he just met. Um, <laughs> here to fight for Georgia. I told him I didn't want to be a politician. I didn't, don't play golf. I don't eat lunch. I don't eat separate. I don't eat with them. I don't eat what they eat because I'm here to represent the people. <laughs> right. I mean, the pe people don't eat lunch. People, the people go from breakfast straight to dinner. That's how the people do it. And the afternoons are reserved for baby making. That's right. <laughs> There's a reason his name isn't Herschel Talker, and, uh, well, we just saw what that re Oh! It is, uh, this is, um, my wife, Molly, what are you doing? Oh, I'm sounding the alarm, Jimmy. I didn't know we had an alarm. Oh, we do, I, I didn't either, it was backstage. Okay, um, why are you, uh, sounding an alarm you found backstage? Because tomorrow is election day. And abortion rights are gone or in danger in 26 states, even though the overwhelming majority of this country supports a woman's right to choose. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Every time you have sex, is your intention to have a baby? No. I just wait till you eat a gummy and then try to snuggle in. <laughs> That question was for them. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't. Thank you very much. <laughs> Being a mom is the best and the hardest job on the planet. I can't imagine forcing any woman who doesn't want that job to take it against her will. <laughs> six out of 10 women, six out of 10 women who have an abortion already have kids at home. They know how hard the job is. 92% of abortions happen in the first 13 weeks. A good portion of the women who need one after the first trimester do it because of health complications that could kill her or her baby. Roughly half the women who have abortions live below the poverty line. I'm sorry, are you expecting this to be funny? Because it is not going to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have the resources to raise another child. They don't have the money to drive to another state to get health care. The only person who should be making a life-altering and potentially life-saving decision for a woman and her body is the woman herself. And we need men to help us. I'm not out here with this dumb alarm asking you guys to love abortion. I'm asking you to love women enough, to trust women enough to make their own difficult decisions and to vote for the people who will make that happen tomorrow. Our daughters should not have to fight the battles that our grandmothers won. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
do. Oh, oh. And I want dinner on the table when I get home and maybe a gummy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Molly. It's, she's right. Tomorrow is election day. And, um, Boy, right, every Democrat I know uh, right now has that feeling you get the night before a colonoscopy. It's, uh, anything can happen, but win or lose, uh, rest assured that the MAGA Republicans will claim they won. Sadly, only around half of Americans are expected to vote in the, the other half's in line for a Powerball ticket. Uh, <laughs> someone needs to combine those, really. Some big names are on the campaign trail for the Democrats this weekend. Joe Biden was in New York, Obama was in Pennsylvania, Bill Clinton was in Vegas, which must have been the easiest ask ever. I mean, <laughs> I'm in, fire up the jet. Uh, meanwhile, Republicans are pulling out the big guns too. Chuck Norris endorsed Blake Masters for the Senate in Arizona in his race against Mark Kelly, which is, I don't know, Chuck Norris is a pretend Texas Ranger. Mark Kelly's an actual astronaut who went into space. But, and Blake Masters, look at the, just look at those eyes. I mean, I don't know what. <laughs> He is. All I know is you have to vote. Democracy is fading like the McFly family photo in Back to the Future. And the tinfoil hat crowd is on high alert, led by none other than the My Pillowsbury Doughboy. I'm telling everyone out there, we are watching from every angle. We, there's people in every state, every county, every precinct, Brandon. Remember, you, they might think you can't look and see what's going inside that black box. But we can now, in real time, through something called the Edison Report, everybody, we have cyber guys watching this. What I'm telling you is this election, it's all eyes. We have all the camera angles, all of it. it we're, we got it all under camera. Yeah, and if I know Mike, every one of those cameras will still have the lens cap on while it's going. <laughs> How he would be watching this live, I have no, no, neither one of us. It's a mystery to both of us. He has no idea what he's saying. I have a feeling he's gonna spend the whole day staring at his ring camera, looking at his mailbox. But Mike has been putting his money where his mouth is, supporting uh, far right wing nuts like Lauren Boebert, who's running for reelection in Colorado and has the My Pillow Man all fired up. Hi, it's me, Mike Lindell, the guy who loves good betting, hates machines, and likes a good old-fashioned coffee with ketchup. I'm spending my hard-earned pillow money to talk about a candidate for Colorado's 3rd Congressional District, a little lady named Lorna Goger. <laughs> Lorna is a hard-working mom who fights hard against all the many threats to our country, like gay sex marriage and baby formula. What do the gays want with baby formula anyway? It burns like the dickens when you snort it. Can I get another one of these sweetheart? Thanks there. Laurel Dilbert's a job creator. Like when she got all them nurses at the Garfield County Emergency Room paid overtime on account of she served dirty pork sliders that gave 80 folks diarrhea. Now that's too much diarrhea, even for me. <laughs> Representative Laura Cupert voted against giving them cops who defended the US Capitol the Congressional Gold Medal because she knows we got to keep our precious medals where they belong, right here in our teeth. That's where Jesus put them, to tempt them rappers who play for the Orlando Magic. Now some voters claim La La Go Worm is too far right, but she ain't far right. She married a fellow who went to jail for showing his dingle hanger to a couple of teen gals at a bowling alley. Plus, Lorny Bojangles is quite a looker if you just see the right photo but never a video. So take it from a guy who also brought a gun to a Christmas party. Lauren Polblard is the right choice for Colorado's third district. Paid for with a coffee can of nickels Mike inherited after his grandpa Carl was killed in a fireworks accident. I'm Lauren Bobert, and I approve this message. Oh, well, rest in peace, Grandpa Carl. <laughs> but I'm